Hello and welcome, my name is Matthias and in this After Effects tutorial for marmoworld.com we are going to animate the clock hands of this uh, clock here. And I have prepared already a composition where I have a uh, clock face as one image and I also have these uh, different clock hands, so the seconds hand and here the minutes hand and the hours hand all as separate images and the anchor points of these images are here in the center such that when I animate their rotation they start rotating uh, as they should and what we mainly want to focus now on is how to get a realistic animation of this rotation in an automatic way. Um, so for this we first animate the second uh, hand by hand manually so we say at the very beginning, so we start at the top, at zero, and after one minute, it should be exactly at the same position again, but have one full rotation. And if we take a look at this, it looks as follows. So you can see that it moves in the correct speed, but usually these handles don't move that smoothly, but they jump like from one second to the next one. And this can very easily be achieved with the help of the snap to grid eye expression. So this might sound a bit surprisingly to you because usually the snap to grid is intended to snap position movements to a grid. Yeah, so here I've animated uh, with two keyframes the position of this layer here. It travels from here to here and currently it travels directly. And here this grid distance is always 100 pixels, so if I apply the snap to grid with a grid size of 100 to this position, apply, you can see that now uh, here the point jumps from grid point to grid point and stays always as close as possible to the original motion path. Yeah? But you can do the same not only for position values, but you can apply the same eye expression also to the rotation of this seconds handle here. So we just apply it and we the grid size now has to be as follows. So um, for s full rotation of 360, yeah, for 360 we wanted to do it in 60 steps. So we say divided by 60. Now this means a grid size of 6. And if we apply this now to the rotation of this layer, apply, the result looks as follows. So you can see that now the handle here jumps nicely from one second to the next without tedious keyframing. You just have these two keyframes and the abrupt jumping is done automatically by this eye expression. And a very nice thing is that hmm, maybe we do not want this to be that abrupt. Yeah, then we can define here some smoothness, which means don't travel abruptly from one second to the next, but take 30% of the time to jump from one second or to travel from one second to the next one, and the remaining 70% stay there. Yeah? So let's see how this is looking like. We apply it, and now you can see it is traveling from one second to the next one, which looks pretty nice and organic. Now, this was just the seconds hand, and now we also want to animate the minutes and the hours, and these should automatically follow the seconds, such that we really just keyframe the seconds and the minutes and hours automatically follow. And for this one, we use another eye expression, and this is in the physics simulations bundle in the real-time eye expressions and it's called cogwheels. So cogwheels is not only useful to actually animate cogwheels, but you can also use it for these hands here. And the idea is to link the rotation of the minutes to the rotation of the seconds. So if we first click here to the seconds rotation and click on link. And now we must say how many T's has the seconds, uh, uh, or how many T's has the minutes hand, and how many T's has the seconds hand. As these are, of course, now no real cogwheels, you cannot really talk about T's here, but the numbers you need for uh, animating a watch are always the same, and these are as follows. So you just set the T's of this hand to 60, and the one of the other as one. And you can imagine this as simply saying uh, when the seconds hand makes uh, 60 
second steps, yeah, the minutes hand should just do one. And if you put here just 60 and one, and you also need to enable this flip direction to ensure both are going in the same direction. And this is always the same. You don't really need to understand this, just to link the minutes to the seconds, use these values 60, one and flip direction and apply it. Okay, and similarly, we want now to link the hours to the minutes and we do this by first linking it. So we need to click here to unlink and click again with the minutes selected to link it. So now we have an I expression that follows these minutes and we apply it to the hours. And this time not with the settings 61, but with the setting 60 and then five. And this is because when the minutes makes one full rotation, yeah, the hours should go like to f from 12 to one, for example. Yeah, and this is in our seconds that we're counting. If this here are 60 seconds, then this here are five. Yeah, so it should go like five seconds marks when the minutes takes 60 of them, takes a full rotation. Again, we leave this flip direction enabled and click on apply. And now you can see that when we start keyframing our seconds, so let's say we want to go here uh, like uh, one hour, yeah, 60 full rotations of the seconds, you can see that these move accordingly. Or let me first reset the keyframes of these here to zero, everything to zero. This means if we go to zero here too, everything is at 12. Yeah? And now if we say, okay, the second uh, hand makes 60 full rotations. Yeah. Then after that, it's one hour, and this is exactly what you want, what you would expect. Yeah. If you make 120 full rotations, you are at two hours. And if you say you make 120 full rotations, and then you make half a half a rotation more, like here uh, 180, then it's half a minute later. Okay, and by that you can play around more with this. Now, yeah, with just keyframing the seconds, you have a nice watch that always behaves as you would expect. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial for marmoworld.com.